So it looks like we're gonna have some good weather today. So we're gonna get up on the workshop roof and we're gonna install 20 more solar panels. At least I hope so. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to unpack the solar panels and we're going to put Tigo rapid shutdown modules on them. This is gonna be a roof mounted system. So it has to have some type of a rapid shutdown. So that could be a rapid shutdown. It could be a DC optimizer and it also could be micro inverters. All of those have a built-in shutdown inside of them. So where these solar panels are being mounted up on the workshop roof, I have no shading issues whatsoever. It's in full sunlight all day long. And that's why I'm going with just a regular rapid shutdown. If I had shading problems, I would wanna go with a DC optimizer instead. And what a DC optimizer will do, like in the simplest form, is it will cancel out the shaded panels and it'll allow the solar array to make its maximum amount of wattage, even though it's partially shaded. And microinverters are an AC coupled system. They make 240 volts right at the solar panel. And then that all combines and comes out and ties to the grid through your breaker panel. So it doesn't connect to a charge controller or the solar panel inputs that we have on our inverter. So it's not really a good match for our system. So a lot of times they ship these solar panels, they're standing vertical. So when I do this to unpack them, I put a bar clamp on the top. And I'll get these all clamped together and then I'll cut off the rest of these straps. And to take a panel out, I'm just gonna undo the clamp, slide out one panel. And I'll clamp these back together and slide this one out. So this is a Canadian Solar 390 watt solar panel. And I bought this off Signature Solar. They don't offer these anymore. I bought this more toward the beginning of the year. And they always have really good deals on solar panels, but the, the trick is you gotta buy a minimum of 10 if you buy from them. So when you purchase solar panels, one thing to pay attention to is how long the wires are because they sell these in multiple configurations. Sometimes the wires are real short so that you can hook it right to the next panel in a portrait configuration, but some of them are long enough if you have them in landscape that they can actually go up long enough to connect to the next solar panel long wise. And typically I'd rather buy a longer cable and make sure I'm not short. So this right here, this is the Tigo rapid shutdown module. It has these little metal clips at the top and these are made to slide and lock in on the metal frame of the solar panel. So this module has two sets of wires. The short set is made to attach to the, the wires on the solar panel. And the long set, this is now the set of wires that you would use to connect all the solar panels in series. So this would connect to the solar panel on each side of this panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our shutdown module at the top of the panel in the middle. And these, oh, they push on hard. And that's so that these bite in and, and ground the module through the panel. So to attach all these wires to the frame to try to keep the wires nice and neat and not from hanging down toward the roof, I have these HACO clips. And they're just like little sheet metal clips and they'll clip on the panel. This will hold the wire straight with or parallel with the side. And then I've got a 90 degree one and it will hold the wire like perpendicular to the side. So when it goes from one panel to the other, these 90 degree ones are a little bit harder to find. So this style here will hold two wires and I clip it so it'll hold it on the inside of the frame. So you just slide it on the frame. It bites in just like the shutdown module. And then you can take your wire and clip it into it. So right now I've got three clips on this panel. So the wire goes out into the frame and it ties into a clip here goes around the frame, hits a clip, and then ties into the shutdown module. This wire is actually shorter, so it just comes around and it only hits one clip, and then back to the shutdown module. So we're gonna plug our two modules together here. I'm gonna run this wire around. I'm gonna clip it into this clip because they do hold two wires. And then I'm gonna clip this clip, and then I'm gonna bring this one around and into this one. And there we go. All our wires are nice and neat. I'm gonna take one of these 90 degree clips. I'm gonna put it down here where the wire goes across the bottom of the frame. And this 90 degree clip only holds one wire. See if I can give you a little bit closer look at the, 
the wiring and how it clips in. And of course it comes over here and clips in and then we've got the 90 degree clip down here as it goes across. And then the same exact layout on the next panel. So I think I'm pretty happy with the way the wiring is all routed and, and laid out here. And this is the exact way I'll do it on the roof. I'm just trying to pre-plan before I get up there. But I'm gonna do the rest of this up on the roof because I'm gonna stack up my pallets, or my pallets, my panels, and I'm gonna lift them up there on pallet forks. They're not gonna stack very well with these modules and these clips and everything on there. So I'll do this exact arrangement and wire it this exact way when I get up there on the roof. So now it's warmed up a little bit more. The roof did have frost on it this morning, so now everything's dry, it's safe to get up there. So we're gonna go up and finish the junction box. So we're gonna run the ground and ground the solar panel mounts. And we're also going to run uh, the PV wire out of the junction box with MC4 connectors on it so that it's ready to hook up to these panels. All right, I've got a ground point that attaches to the rail and I'm going to mount that right here beside the junction box. And that's gonna ground this row of panels. And then I've got another ground point that I'm gonna put down here on this rail and it'll ground the lower set of solar panels. So I've just got a number six bare ground wire and I'm just gonna run this in and attach it to the ground bar. And we're gonna run the wire into this ground clamp. And we will continue it down into this ground clamp. And we'll just cut it off. So now I'm gonna run wiring out of the junction box, out to the solar panel array. And since it's gonna be outside exposed to the weather, we're using PV wire. And there's gonna be one short wire and it's gonna come in and it's gonna to attach to the solar panel on this side. And then we're gonna run one long wire all the way out to the far end to attach to the last solar panel because we are hooking these up in series. And then we're gonna do two more wires that are gonna go down to the bottom row and do the same thing. And we'll make sure it's long enough to reach to the far side of the solar panel. Well, I ended up running out of wire, so I don't know why I'm running it along the bottom rail. I should probably run it along the top rail and it'll be long enough. So to secure these wires as they run across the roof, I've got these clips. They're a wire clip made by Iron Ridge and they're made to clip on the top of this rail. I'm gonna put these every couple feet all the way down and it looks like these are gonna hold, they could hold like maybe four wires in here. So plenty of room for what we got. Once you get your wires in it, you can clip them closed so they don't come out. So you can see the wires clipped in there and then hopefully you can see they're nice and neat up off the roof all the way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire up this junction box and the negative wires are gonna be on this side and the long wires are gonna be the positive wires. And we'll get these landed on the terminal box and we'll put on our MC4 connectors. All right, so to put these MC4 connectors on, I'm gonna strip out about a half inch at the end. This is 10 gauge wire. And 10 gauge wire is about, I think five millimeters. And the crimper doesn't have five millimeters. It has two and a half, four and six. So I'm gonna use the closest without going over. It's kind of like the price is right. So I'm using number four. And then you just crimp this down until you have to go all the way to get it to release. And then once it's done, you really need to pull on it. If it pulls off of here, then it's not crimped tight enough. And we'll go ahead, we'll slide our connector on and then it'll click into place. And then the connector should not pull off as well. And then we'll just go ahead and tighten the back down as tight as you can get it and that'll seal it up around the wire. And there we go. We have a MC4 connector. And MC4 connectors are a little bit weird. 
to get used to. So when, if you have a male connector, it gets the female pin. It's kind of, you gotta kind of have a rule of thumb. Male connector, female pin. Female connector, male pin. You might have to loosen the back of the connector to get it to actually slide in and click in place. But really they're not too bad to put on. So just a quick look in the junction box. We got both positive wires coming in, landing on the terminal box, both negative wires coming in and terminating. And if I was to do this different, I would probably break these terminal blocks up where I had two on this side and I had two on this side, but I didn't have enough of these stops to be able to do that. But it'll work fine the way it is. It's just a little messier than I'd like. So my tractor lifts 10 feet tall and that's not quite high enough. <laughs> so I've added some uh, pallets on here to hopefully get it high enough. We'll just go ahead and take the first two we made up. We'll go ahead and get those put on. Well, it looks a lot closer in the cab. So here's what it looks like up here on the roof. I've got it about as close as I can get it, and I should be able to pull these off just fine. So these solar panels are not going to match up with our other ones because they're a different size. So these panels, they clamp down with this UFO clamp, they call it, because it looks like a flying saucer, I guess. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the rail next to that panel, and then once we put the next set in, we'll tighten them down. It clamps both panels at the same time. So all 20 solar panels are mounted up here on the roof and there's a huge difference between the old array and this all black array. I mean, this thing looks way better, doesn't it? So here's another look at the entire roof and you can just tell that those black on black solar panels look way better than the original ones. So I know this looks a little strange with all these different panels not matching, but this roof faces south toward my pond. And if you drive up my driveway, you don't even see these panels. You can't see them from the road. You have to be standing in about the right spot to even see these. So I'm not too worried about the way they look. I put these in in stages and it was more about what I could afford at the time, right? And I was trying to get uh, a lot of wattage of solar panels at a decent price. And that's what I have here. And when you put them in over time like this, more than likely they're not gonna match. But if you were looking for a certain uh, aesthetic on your roof and you want them to look good this black on black panels these look really good at least on this black roof this looks really nice and the hardware like these rails and the bolts and all that stuff you can get that painted black as well so that it all blends in so the solar panels we just hooked up on the roof they're going to pass through this room over to the house to the 6000 xp so what i want to do is i want to install a pv disconnect switch inside of here that way, anytime I'm doing work inside of this room, I can easily turn off these panels. So I've decided to put the PV disconnect right here on top of the wiring trough. And I've already punched out two holes 
in the wiring trough to match up with it. So this here is the disconnect that goes inside of this enclosure. It's a four pole disconnect. So it means it has four different switches in there, but yet they work together. So they all four turn on and off at the same time. And when you wire it up, these are not real intuitive. So you really need to look at the wiring diagram that comes with the one you bought because they will vary depending on what the configuration of these are. But just to give you an example, number one switches with number two, which is exact opposite corners. And it's, it's not, they're not straight across from each other. This kind of confuses people, so just look at the wiring diagram. All right, I've got the switch wired up. So I've got array four and then array five. And then down here at the bottom, it's opposite. So then it's array four and then array five. And the wiring goes from the disconnect switch down here to my junction box and then over to my house. Go ahead and turn it on. And I've got a Tigo rapid shutdown module in the 6000 XP, so it should turn on the solar panels. Well, I don't know if you're going to be able to read that or not. We're running about 315 volts. Now it's showing about 320 volts. We'll turn it back off, and it should go into rapid shutdown mode. And these wires coming from the solar panels will not have any voltage. Or very low voltage. Oh, there it dropped. So you see the voltage is just under 6 volts. So it's a safe voltage level. And that's straight from the solar panels. So it's a nice bright sunny day out here today. There's not a cloud in the sky right now. It's cold, it's like 37 degrees, and it's December 19th. We're two days away from the shortest day of the year. So the sun is almost the lowest on the horizon that it'll be. And with the new 7,800 watts of solar that's up there, it charged the 6,000 XP, the wall mount battery, it was charged by 11 o'clock today. And previously with only one solar array on it, it would take till three or four in the afternoon to get fully charged on that battery. So. That's like four or five hours faster to get 100% charged on a sunny day. So that is good. And our other system, the EP Cube, it's got uh, the other three solar panel arrays on there, just over 11,000 watts, and it's almost fully charged. Not quite there yet because this is cleaning day. Rebecca's doing laundry, the dryer's going. It's a high power use day. It's our highest power use day of the week, actually. And we're still getting the batteries charge back up so that's a that's a good thing so i think we're sitting pretty good now on solar panels and i think what i'll focus on next is probably maybe some more battery storage so that uh, we can last longer in between those sunny days and december and january our winters here are very cloudy so more batteries is definitely be a good thing i think so i know when i was installing those solar panels the other day i didn't tie off. I didn't use that anchor point that I put up there. That was a long way to transverse with the panel. I felt like the rope that you would be tied to would probably just got caught and it would have been more probably a more of a tripping hazard and more dangerous to use it in that situation. But I do think I will use the anchor point when I wash solar panels. When you're up there and the, the roof is wet, it's soapy, it's slick, um, you could slip and fall very easily. And that's when I think the, the anchor point will come in very handy. But anyway, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. So I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.